Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that really doesn't care for Harry Potter. I just, I don't. I do not like it. I thought that Fantastic Beasts movie was two and a half hours that I will never get back. I would pay to have it removed from my memory. It was that bad and dull. Oh my gosh, that was dull. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to take a look at 7075, Rebellion from Academy Games. Seventeen Seventy Five from Academy Games is the second game in the Birth of America series from Academy Games. Now you recall, not long ago, I reviewed Eighteen Twelve: The Invasion of Canada, which I thought was a very fun game um, about the War of Eighteen Twelve. Now, Seventeen Seventy Five is kind of the same system, a very similar gameplay in a lot of respects, and yet there are some very important differences. And this is indeed its own game. Now, one of the biggest differences from 1812 is in 1775, there are not five, but rather there are four factions. You have the uh, American, uh, the Continental Army, you have kind of the American militia, and then on the other side, of course, you have the British regulars and the, uh, the British loyalists, Americans that chose to fight for King George. These are the different factions involved in the game, but there are also, through the use of event cards, Hessians that may be entered that will fight for the British, and there are also the uh, French who will come to the aid of the Americans throughout the game. Also, throughout the game board, you will have uh, Native Americans, which are the Green Cubes, and uh, they will kind of interact with the, with the other factions in very interesting ways as well. So, at the beginning of the game, of course, you set up according, you set up your cubes according to where they're located on the, on the board. Now, again, the, the British regulars and the Continental Army, they both have fewer dice but stronger. They're going to roll two, up to two dice, but they're stronger dice. The, the, the Loyalists and the uh, Patriot Militia, they will roll three dice, but they're not quite as strong. Now, what's going to happen is, of course, you have the different states, the original 13 colonies, as well as some of the areas in Canada. Now, you're going to go ahead, and at the beginning of the game, only certain colonies and, and areas in Canada are controlled directly by one player. And this is very important, because you're looking at the different colonies or states, and you're going to have to control all of them in order to gain a victory point in order to place units there. Now, just like in 1812, you have a bag that's going to have the different colored cubes in them. You reach in, you pull out the cube to see who goes next. Now, the very first thing you do is reinforcements. Now, at the very beginning of the game, you get four reinforcements plus any fled units that, that they may have had. You get to place them on the board. Now, you can only place in states you control. That means you are the only, uh, you your side, your team, rather, is the only team that has units in that area. If Native Americans are in there and they're not allied to you, then you don't control the state. But if any of your enemies are in that same state, you don't get a place there. You don't control the state. But if you do control the state, if it's got a city uh, area, you can go ahead and you can place um, uh, units in that city area. When that player goes, of course, he's got a hand of three cards. Now, the cards may be either movement cards or event cards. The movement cards will say how many armies uh, that person can move and how far they can move them. Now, again, an army is a group of any number of cubes, any number of units in one geographic area. Now, in order to activate that, though, of course, one of your colors has to be in there. So if you're the American, uh, the Continental Army with the Americans, your color is blue. If uh, there's just a bunch of white for pa uh, Patriot Militia, uh, you can't move them. But if you've got just one blue in there, you can move all of them. And then, of course, you can move them any number of spaces and then move them into combat. Now, once you get into combat, of course, then you're going to be each rolling your own dice. But you're playing uh, the, the movement cards. You have to play one movement card per turn, but then you can play any number of event cards you may have in your hand. And the event cards are going to trigger all sorts of fun and interesting uh, little things that happen, as well as some dirty tricks on your enemies. 
Now, also critically, as I say, you do have Native Americans. Now, the Native Americans are the grain cubes, and they're placed on the board in different places. Now, they're essentially neutral initially, but as soon as you move your units into a space with Native Americans, you befriend them. Essentially, they become your allies. And then, when you move out, you can take them with you, and they can be involved in combat. Now, when you move into combat, uh, essentially this is how it's going to play out. If both sides have Native Americans, then through simple attrition, you're going to get rid of the Native Americans on a one-for-one -one basis. So let's say if one side has two Native American allies, one side has three Native American allies, you're both going to lose two with the one side having one Native American ally remaining before combat. You're going to go ahead then and, of course, roll for combat. You're going to roll each your individual dice. This means you can have four, potentially even more, different colored dice uh, rolling if the Hessians are involved, the French are involved, or Native Americans are involved. The Hessians, the Native Americans, they're going to kind of move in the same way. You can move them along with your other colored cubes and bring them into the battles in the same way. Now, when you get into combat, of course, the defender, who's ever in that space first, they roll first. It's kind of like Invasion of Canada, who's ever home territory rolled first. Here, it's whoever is the defender rolls first. If you uh, roll a target, then you immediately kill one of your enemy. They're not going to get a chance to shoot at you. If you roll the flea symbol, then one of your cubes actually goes to the flea area on the board. And then, of course, if you roll the blank, that's a command decision, you can choose to retreat your guy. Assuming the enemy is left standing, then they can roll their die to see what happens. They have those same options as well. Now, at the end of your turn, you go ahead and you draw up to three cards. If you haven't played them all, you draw up to three cards. And then, of course, you draw a new uh, a cube from the bag, see who goes next. Now, you keep going around like this until, at some point in the game, you play your truce card. I every player has a truce card, so there are four truce cards in the game. Now, the truce card is going to let you do some pretty good movement and pretty good you know, uh, movement uh, actions there. But it's also going to kind of signal that you're getting closer to the end of the game. Because as soon as one faction has both of their truce cards uh, played, then the game is over. You go to the end of that round, and you know whoever then who controls the most states, again, you have to be the only team with units in that state to control the entire state. Whoever has the most states, and there he's in Canada, wins 1775 Rebellion. So 1775 Rebellion, as I say, is the second game in the Birth of America series from... Uh, Academy Games. And, you know, I, I've got to be blunt. I loved 1812. I thought 1812 was just brilliant. And I was kind of hesitant about 1775 because I'm, I'm thinking to myself, well, it looks like it's adding stuff and adding mechanics. And to me, 1812 just felt like it was, it was perfect. Just a, a, a perfect game. And so I was worried going into this with how the you know, Native Americans work out and, and with the, 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 kind of the, the French coming in and the Hessians coming in. How is that going to play out? And so we, I played the game a few times now um, with some different friends. And, you know, I, I have to tell you, being perfectly honest, that I really, really, really really, 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 really love this game. For reals. 1775 is amazing. This is an amazingly fun game. I thought 1812 was perfect. I was wrong. 1775 is better. I mean, it's just the, the Native Americans uh, it brings this, this, this new angle to it, the sugar and spice to it that's very cool. I really like that. I really like how 
area control plays out in this game, how you're going to control the whole states. And that's not as easy as you think it's going to be because just one guy can move a cube in there and it can it can screw you up. You lose control of the state. You don't have a reinforcement spot, but you also lose that, that, that victory point. It's very cool. I think that's handled much better here than it is in 1812. And bear in mind, I really liked 1812. I really love in these games the negotiation between you and your team member. I love that. I, 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 I love that so much. I, negotiation, of course, is one of my favorite mechanic, mechanics in games, and it's so cool where you've got a team member, but you have to work together. You have to kind of share information about your cards and, and what your plans are, but you're all around the table, so it can't be too you can't be too sneaky. And critically, you never know what turn order of play is going to be. So you may have the best strategy laid out, and you may have got everything coordinated with your with your teammate, but then somebody else goes first, and it kind of throws a monkey wrench in your plans. And it's brilliant. It is brilliant. I have to tell you, it's like I say, I've played this game with a few people now, a few different groups now, and it is rare for me. It is extremely rare for me whenever I bring a game that I play with multiple groups to have everyone and every one of those groups tell me they love this game, they want to buy it. That, like, never happens. Maybe one group will do that, but when I play, you know, games with multiple groups, it's always some people think, ah, it's okay, and some people like it, and some people don't, and you're all over the board. Everybody I have played this game with loved it. Loved it. And I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it so much. This game is amazing. Um, and just brilliant. Loved 1812. 1775 Rebellion is better. So I guess I'm going to say try it before you buy it. No! I'm going to say buy it. Buy this game. You will not regret it. It is so much fun. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on BoardGameGeek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are The Discriminating Gamer, and much like John Paul Jones, I have not yet begun to roll the dice. Please somebody help me on my feet again, and I don't know where I'm going, and I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help me on the solid ground. It's a long time.